another night on the Untold, another one, your favorite show by now. Joined by Ahmed Mazidi, Hassan Al Juz. Yeah. Today is so confident about this being the favorite show. That's what you say all the time, don't you? <laughs> Took it from you, to be honest. Um, today is a very, very, very cool very, episode. very interesting episode. Someone I've been wanting to mm. meet for a long time. I've seen him on social media doing incredible work, giving people incredible advice. Uh -huh. He's a master at physical therapy. I would yeah, say, yeah, yeah. At this point, I think you that's know? a topic that uh, people like myself, because I, you know, have a desk job. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have the same desk job that yeah, they, where yeah. they work eight hours a day. I can only imagine uh, the strain on the back. So hearing such advice from a specialist, mm -hmm. yeah, who is obviously very influential mm -hmm. in what he does, is going to be really, really good. Very, very important. So let's welcome our guest. He is not a stranger on KTV2. He's a fellow colleague. Yep, he is. You'll find out who it is right after this. We're back on The Untold, having a very medical episode one yep. more time. You Absolutely. Know? We love those episodes here. Joined by a colleague on KTV2 as well, Dr. Wael Al-Asag. Welcome on the show. Hey, yeah, come on, uh, welcome, thanks for welcome. having me. Of course. Thanks. Ahmed is a huge fan, by the way. <laughs> he was telling me this before we start this. Great to know yeah, because you, you've done great things, and we're going to dive into those. But I want to start with how you started. What got you into uh, physical therapy and the medicine world? Wow. Uh -huh. Uh, I was a basketball player. Oh wow! And I played for uh, Kuwait national team. Nice. And uh, Wait, that, what age was that? Uh, that was uh, since I was about 14 years old. Oh, okay. Nice. And then I continued until I was uh, 18, and then I went to the UK. Okay. To study, so I'm bringing it to basketball. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, I have a lot of injuries. Oh. So I know about uh, the injury, what needs to be done mm. uh, as a player, and then. It caught my attention, but it wasn't my decision uh, when I went to study at the beginning uh, after the uh, element, uh, the uh, the high school. I went mm. to to the UK to study dentistry. Dentistry. Yes. Wow, could be Whoa. different. Okay. Yes, and I went to Glasgow for two Glasgow years. Glasgow for two years. Where did you? To Glasgow, Glasgow. and Scotland. And that's where I studied. Well, what yes. made you pursue dentistry at first? Like, uh, what was it? That was. Uh, it's like me and one of my closest friends. We we chose the dentistry as okay. as a it's a good profession. Okay, but Fair. it wasn't that something that we deeply thought mm. of. Okay, but when I went there, mm. I still need the physical activity. I'm right. so active. Yeah, mm. I don't want to just simply stay working on people's mouth. I would okay. like to <laughs> to do something else. Okay. Something so bigger. I changed my mind uh, at that time, and uh, I came back to Kuwait. Okay, because at that time they used to have a uh, three-year program. Okay, where you graduate with diploma. Mm-hmm. In Kuwait, it's four years with bachelor degree in uh, in physical therapy. What made you choose physical therapy, though, uh, because I, of the injuries and all that? I, I like I like to be active. I like to okay. be involved so in, in problem solving, okay. sports, yeah, yeah, yeah. muscles. It's yeah. So you saw your interest in that and you pursued that yes, in Kuwait. Yes, and especially around that time, I've seen also around that time there was some problems around the world mm. where people had multiple injuries and. Uh, I said, how can I help those if I only gonna work on the mouth? Mm. I want to be involved in the field more. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I, I chose physiotherapy uh, and it is very close to uh, the, the, the sport that I'm attached yeah. to. So I chose physiotherapy. Nice. Can you perhaps for the viewers, like if we were to ask you to simplify the definition of physiotherapy, like what does it involve exactly and what does it not involve? Are there any misconceptions to the yeah. definition? Uh, physiotherapy is a profession where you work with all the injuries or any problem related to movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically it has to do with the muscles, the bones, uh, the neural system. So anything that can prevent you from the normal movement, yeah. physiotherapy will help you to regain the lost movement. It must be a very challenging field. It is challenging because in physiotherapy, we, we didn't have like the different specialties separate from each other. You have to study everything. Mm. So you have to get involved in everything right from the diagnosis until the uh, application of the different uh, treatment mm. procedures. 
and we used to treat pediatrics, neuro cases, uh, people with older yeah. adults injuries mm. and, and so forth. So almost with sport injury. So everything you have to study everything. Mm. It's not like other professions where you will be specialized right from the beginning into one field like hand therapist mm. or podiatrist yeah. where you study only one part of the right. human body right you have to study everything and you have to understand the relationship between all the different parts in the human body so oh that you can understand the origin and what's mm. normal movement and what's abnormal so can you imagine like how huge that field is you having to study the bones right. the muscles yeah, yeah, and yeah. the ne neural uh, connections mm -hmm. it's a uh, lot it must be uh, so how many years was that again of studying is it, was it six years the, you said? the minimum requirement in kuwait is four years four years, four years. in other places yeah, there is a, a dpt program like mm. in the states it's seven years mm -hmm. and other places five years mm. for us in kuwait four years is never enough so it's what did you enough. do what did you you did only the four years no i did the four years then mm -hmm. i went uh, for the u.s to finish my master's degree and nice. uh, my phd degree so this all is all in physical therapy yes nice, this is nice. another seven years wow so collectively that's 11 years of study a lot of years yeah a lot of years <laughs> yeah but, i mean here you are today yeah. what, what was your specialty in when you did your phd uh, I did uh, my PhD on uh, studies related to older adults. That's mm -hmm. called the geriatrics, okay. wow. which is the diseases related to older adults. Mm -hmm. So I, I focused on that and then I went back to teach at Kuwait University because oh. uh, I had to be sent by Kuwait University to get the degree right, and the focus right. on, on geriatrics, rehabilitation. Fair. And then I went back to teach at Kuwait University. So I taught there for uh, 11 years. 11 years? Yes. Wow. What made you leave? Uh, I felt uh, it's too small of a size <laughs> to me to stay at Kuwait okay. University. Okay, fair. Uh, plus, I would like to, to be involved more <laughs> right. into, into practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so since then, I, 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 I really liked uh, um, th th that decision that right. I that I I went out of Kuwait University. Mm. I resigned actually resigned. in 2014. Wow! Where I so opened, almost a decade ago. Wow. Yes, yeah. I I uh, resigned and uh, started my own clinic, mm -hmm. and Alhamdulillah, since then uh, I've seen almost uh, 35,000 patients. Oh my God! Wow! I was, because the next question I'm supposed to ask is that what's the most common thing? I mean, 35,000. I mean, I'm sh assuming it literally you saw every single case in the history yes. of mankind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you've seen everything. Yes. Well, what's the most common in, in Kuwait? Or perhaps is there something common across the world? Whenever I go to any gathering or I give any lecture, the, the, mm -hmm. the first question I say, how many have neck injury or neck pain? Yeah. You see all the hands. Wow. How many have low back pain? You yeah. see all the hands. Uh, so most of the common injuries that we see today, or we see today, is neck mm. pain mm. and low back pain. Low back. Pain. These are more, most common. And, and, and I, probably I can, I can attest to the low back pain. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, research says that the um, or reports that uh, we have what almost eighty percent of people they have to have at one point in time low back pain. Mm. I mean, sorry, but literally just, <laughs> yeah. just before, I mean, if we go back, let's assume I asked you this question 10 years ago, would would you have said the same answer? Uh, I would say I would stick to 80%, uh, but looking at that time, we will see mostly the injury is seen with older adults, mm. mid-age. Yeah. Today, we've seen it with younger Younger people. Because of social media, that's literally what I don't I know, because we're less active, you think? Because of the phone. <laughs> because of the phone. The phone. Especially uh, the neck thing, right? The neck I, I've seen videos about yeah. you talking about yes. that. Uh, this has prevented people from moving. Mm. So if you have... It's immobilized yeah. If you don't move enough, you will mm. be sitting for a long time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The pressure on the lower mm. back and sitting is much greater than in standing. Right. So if you want to work on your mobile phone, you want to play, so you will sit for a long, sit time. For a long time. So you have more low back pain yeah. as well as neck pain. Absolutely. And it's the neck pain is not just the pain. It's the things associated with the, the, the neck pain. Mm. And probably we were talking about some of these. Yeah. <laughs> we will we'll talk about um, I, I believe you've distinguished yourself because you follow your own philosophy in treatment. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. What is that philosophy? Uh, first of all, it's not just it's not it's not something that I invented. Right. And in, in our clinic, we use evidence-based practice. 
Okay. We don't want to use um, some traditional way of treating people in, in a, uh, uh, we call it an ineffective way. Uh, what is the traditional, for example, what tra is the traditional, traditional your approach? Traditional physiotherapy is mm. people depend too much on machines. Okay. like electrotherapy machines, mm. ultrasound machines, okay. uh, um, you name it. Yeah. These kind of machines are, uh, we call it, we supposed to call it an adjunct method of treatment mm. that can help ease pain, mm. but it will never treat the cause of pain. Mm. So my, my approach is focusing on looking at the cause of the pain mm. and how we can develop the program for treating that. Uh, my approach, it might be, it's, it's not unique, it is something that's supposed to be with every physiotherapist, yeah. where we have to be involved in diagnosis mm. from biomechanical point of view. Mm. Most of the diseases and injuries, mm. they are diagnosed from medical point of view or from chemical point of view. Mm. We know that chemical uh, point of view or chemical causes of the uh, of the diseases are mostly caused by mechanical issue for example uh, irregular heartbeat this is something that we see a lot today yeah when we check the heart they say it's normal <coughs> okay mm. so what is causing that abnormality in it's the heart you mentioned that i have that yes and, okay. and sometimes they 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 use whatever stimulator to mm. bring back the regulation of, of yeah. the heart mm. instead of the pacemaker or beta blockers so, yes so so now they treat it chemically mm. when we look at the cause of the problem we see that there is constant forward head bending causing displacement of the vertebra causing instability pushing the uh, the vagus nerve Mm. vagus nerve that helps to regulate the blood rhythmic Interesting. okay wow. so by by damaging the fibers of the nerve it will no longer can regulate the heartbeat because it's one of its function is to help to ease the mm. the impulses okay. so by going and trying to do something with the heart without looking at the cause, which is mechanical problem, mm. we will continue to use chemical to treat something that cannot be treated chemically. Because it's physical. Now it, it is biomechanical, mm. it is physical. So we have to look at the cause of the pain, which is what happened to the neck, so that we can help the heart. And mm. it's the same thing with people who have headache, mm. people who have blurred vision, mm. dizziness, ringing of the ears and so forth they try to look at it from chemical point of view mm. when most of the time it yeah. is caused because of the neck problem mm. which is mechanical problem so today this is seen every day in in my clinic where people come with headache neck pain very common dizziness very common. and yeah. so forth yeah and they they go from one doctor to, to another and the irony is that every doctor says you're fine i don't see any problem yeah mm. the system or the 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 uh, um, let's say if it's if it's like uh, the uh, the uh, the the system itself there is no problem there mm. right. the problem with what supply it mm. and the problem they are not looking at the cause yeah because yeah. they are looking at the organ itself right the, the organ has no problem by itself mm. it's like when the when the light flashes there is a problem with electricity coming okay mm. if someone okay. focuses on the light they don't see any problem with the light this is yeah. the what's caused the problem that's why our approach is trying to see where the cause wow and gotcha. then treat yeah. it i like how you simplify it he did yeah bulb. honestly yeah. but we're gonna continue the show after this break and we're probably gonna find out why why some people might consider you a bit controversial right after this <laughs> We're back on The Untold with Dr. Wael Lasseg. Um, we left off with a controversial question. Well, explaining why you're controversial. Your methods 
are technically better in a lot of cases than surgical interventions. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, my method is not better. Okay. Uh, you have to know with which it's working. Mm. If there is an individual who really needs an operation, and for example, there is there are some red flag signs, mm. I would choose an operation. Okay. But most most people they don't need an operation. Mm -hmm. Now there is a um, a lack of decision, the right decision regarding an op uh, taking an operation or not, and there are sometimes uh, a financial. Mm. Um, motive right. behind the operation. Absolutely. There is a nice article uh, that was published. Uh, the title of that article, Why Surgeon Insist of Doing Unnecessary Operations. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Looking at the knee by itself, annually in the United States, there are 800,000 operations done to the knee unnecessarily. Wow. Where they don't need it. Unnecessarily. unnecessarily there that are other crazy. operations that are done half and half okay okay and there are operations that are done necessarily but there are eight hundred thousand operations are done because unnecessarily. Fin financial gain absolutely it's a business uh, absolutely mm. and that today we have some people who came to us mm -hmm. and they said the doctor told me since you have an operation uh, i'm sorry since you have an insurance that can cover that <laughs> so don't worry yeah. we, we'll deal with the insurance and they'll give you the most expensive uh, so, surgery. so so now <laughs> it's not the injury that that mm. that necessitates the operation mm. it's the presence of the insurance, insurance coverage that right okay so right now uh, in my clinic we mm -hmm. have recommended zero operations for people who came to us with ACL injury. Zero. 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 And ACL is a big thing. But zero. Zero. Why? Because most of these cases can be recovered without surgery. Wow. I've actually so, never heard of an ACL without surgery, ever. Yes, because sometimes there is a need Mm, yeah. But most of the cases that we've seen, they didn't need. And because they didn't need, this means that the decision mm. was inappropriate, fast, mm -hmm. maybe did not allow for recovery. Yeah. Can ACL mm. be recovered? Can be ACL be healed? According to the research, absolutely. According to the cases that we've seen, I had a case where uh, he, the, he was a student, mm -hmm. had a, a ACL tear and was told that you have to have an operation. Yeah. Uh, he said, I cannot do it right now. I'm studying in the United States. Mm -hmm. So let me go to the States and then I'll decide. He went to the States after six months. He came back. He did an MRI. They told him you had complete tear. Now you have partial tear. So okay. there is healing mm -hmm. that was wow. taken place plus there is stability to the knee so when we need to do acl reconstruction yeah when there is instability of the knee what does that mean what's an instability when, when instability when when the knee is moving there is mm. a test that you do and when you move the knee, the knee you find like movement okay. excessive movement okay. most of the uh, all the cases that i've seen there is no movement okay which means that the knee is stable okay once the knee is stable this means that the acl is doing its function its main function is to stabilize the knee mm -hmm. it is stable we did not lose the function right, so why right. do we need an operation okay so allow it to heal by itself mm. plus work on the muscles because the muscles will help to protect the acl, yeah, ACL. Of course. and then the person will be able to go to normal activities and also to go to sport again. So ACL is one of the most common uh, injuries, injuries that happen in sports. I guess, yeah. What uh, other common you, injuries you, that happen in you sports? You said in sport. Yes. But today, a lot of people are said to have ACL yeah. tear or rupture. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are not playing sport. Really? What, Ordinary then? people. Somebody is walking. Just his knee cracks? Yes. No he, he, feel, he feels a click to the knee. They, they do a, a, an MRI. Uh, and they say that you have tear in the ACL, you have to have an operation. And that, what, oh, what causes wow. that? It's, it's, it's the abnormal movement. For example, if the person twisted his knee, 
-hmm. there will be strain to the ACL. Makes sense, makes but sense. But the yeah. strain does not mean that there is loss of function and you have to have an <laughs> operation. So, I mean, I mean, honestly, the question is, you seems like what, what, what Ahmed was saying, that seems like what your approach sounds very logical. Mm. Why aren't other doctors following up, following this approach? Is it the financial gain again? We, ha we have, in Kuwait at least, I mean. Yeah. We, we, have, uh, we have some doctors who are very logic. Yeah. They follow evidence-based mm. yeah. and they are up to date in their information. Yes. And they are a little bit outside of the box when they think yes. of the cases. There are some people who go by the book. That's the mm. issue. I and that book, they studied when they were <laughs> undergraduates. <Right. laughs> Today, they are, they are not reading about the, the biomechanical point of the injury. Mm. They are mm. reading about how to do surgery and yeah. they are improving in how to do surgeries. Which might oh. not, not be necessary. Mm. Yes, if, if you go to the wrong direction, right. um, it's like a, a campus, okay? Uh, uh, if you have the wrong direction, you will reach the wrong spot mm. yeah so for us let us diagnose correctly and then do whatever you want I, if you miss diagnosing really right bad. from the beginning it's like when when someone goes to 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 uh, to his friend whatever mm. if he goes to the right right mm. turn mm. that's good right. if he takes the wrong turn takes that's him to a, a, a different direction so our, our problem is not with the doctor mm. who wants to learn and who is up to date is with the one who is Stuck fixed in the, right. into yeah, yeah, I yeah, have to do operation. Tunnel Plus vision, today, yeah. because we have we have so many uh, hospitals mm. that they have target. Mm. Mm. I hired you to do operations. That is crazy. And I, I just you, you, you have to that. make your, to your target. So point. sometimes, like I, I, it's very crazy. I, I had one of the clients who came in and he said the doctor saw me and he said you have to have an operation he said uh, excuse me doctor let me ask my brother my brother is a doctor yeah so let me ask him mm. and then i'll decide with him he said your brother is a doctor who's your brother he said so and so he said oh he's our colleague no no, no you don't need an operation no <laughs> take these medications <laughs> and and you'll be fine and, and he said i what? was so surprised that he was with his wife he said i was looking at my wife I said Come what? On. what is that? If he wasn't my <laughs> brother, that so you don't want to operate. That so, is... so that tells you about the decision. I'm um, not talking about all doctors. Right, right, right. Some doctors. No, no, of course, of course, so, of course. So. How did you utilize social media from whenever you started? I don't know when you started to spread your philosophy and advocate for physical therapy over uh, surg surgical interventions. Uh, what I like about social media mm. is to be able to reach as much people as right. possible and right. we have people a lot uh, contacting me from outside of kuwait having problems traveling to kuwait yeah. so i started with online consultations mm -hmm. and then i started with uh, social media by the feedback that i got from people where they had very simple advice sometimes for me it's very simple mm -hmm. yeah. but but with other people it, it's really it's really uh, yeah, any Major solving uh, solving <laughs> a, a long and chronic problem mm. so when i've seen mm. that subhanallah the, the encouragement will, yeah, will yeah, help yeah. you to do more and then i made it like something um, uh, easy mm. i tried to make uh, simple advices and when, you do i mean we've seen it right now literally yeah. you, make, you make the you make something sound that's actually very complicated sounds so simple yeah. that's really he's very point. good at that you, you are <laughs> yeah. i have a question though I have yes. a, so I, I come from a background where I'm, I have a desk job and I think a lot of the people watching this will also have desk jobs. If someone is working eight hours a day and you know you're on the, on the desk working on a laptop, working on your phone and you, you are moving but barely moving, what if, how does that affect our lives? Um, by sitting long time, yeah. you are changing the length of the muscles around your body. Interesting. Especially mm. hip flexors. Mm. especially neck and the anterior aspect of your chest yeah. you will have rounded shoulders mm. forward head That's you true. can have when you stand up you have increased lumbar lordosis which is the curvature of the lower back and then it starts from there by sitting long time yeah. the disc gets it its nutrients by movement mm. so when you compress the disc it it oozes the uh, the 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 fluid outside yeah when you 
uh, stand up, mm. you decrease the pressure. So it changes from positive pressure to negative pressure. Mm. It doesn't have blood vessels supplying it within the disc. It gets its nutrients by changing the pressure from the surrounding. So if you push the disc, you're losing the fluidity of the, te the disc. Yeah. When you move, you will uh, increase the fluid supply to the disc, which basically you give it its life. When you move, so okay. yes, okay. So for those okay. people who sit very long time, if I see the MRI, I will see the disc losing the hydration, the fluid within. Okay. Those people who run, who jog, they have stronger disc and also have good hydration. By having good hydration to the disc means that this disc is, is 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 strong, yeah. and it's impossible for the disc to be injured let me fix the way i'm sitting right now because yes. <laughs> it seems like <laughs> so need, for, for those people need a lot of hydration <laughs> for, for those people who who had to do disc job there is no nobody says that you have to sit down while you're working you can you you can have a higher disc yeah, and yes, work I, yeah. in while you're standing because when you're standing you have less pressure on your lower back yeah. compared to sitting so it's much better for you to work in standing, even if you want to work on a desk, have a higher desk. Yeah, have you ever seen the desks that kind of like go up and down? You know, There's like, the standing ones people yes. use. Is that, I guess, yes. that you would recommend this that. This is the one. There's, uh, I've seen people uh, where they sit on a bounce ball. Yes. Do you recommend that too? That's good. Okay, yeah. that, how does that help the bounce ball? Uh, ba it's, it's the movement. The movement. So you're not stands, sitting yeah. still, yeah. you're moving. Mm. By moving, you're moving more muscles around the, yeah. your, 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 your lower back. Yeah. So again, by changing the pressure, mm. you change the fluid it's supply. Like to the game. Just replace your chair with the bounce ball and tell me what happens. <laughs> well, we're reaching the end of our uh, episode. I wish we had more time. With Honestly, you. We're Honestly, there's a lot of things to cover. Any advice you have for those who might have uh, physical pain and don't know what to do? Uh, first of all, uh, don't listen to anybody that tells you there is no cure. Okay. There is nothing called chronic pain. Mm. There is chronic behavior that caused the pain. Okay. Once we change that I behavior, like your, perspective your life that. will change. That's so a good perspective. Let's 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 be. Um, um, optimistic mm -hmm. everything can be solved your body is designed to be healed wow. and honestly it will heal by itself mm. wow. but the behavior that prevents it from healing properly so our job as physiotherapists is to teach you what to do with your body so that you allow your mm. body to heal Wow. well beautiful advice yeah. thank you so much for that thank you for i'll your definitely time. take it on my desktop <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your time for, uh, here for, today doctor thanks for having and me. if you want to hear more about the doctor and his tips uh tune in to go and be right yes. and uh we'll be back for the wrap-up thank you again thanks for having me Wow, it's more than I expected, you know? He's greater in person, just explaining things, yeah, simplifying yeah. them he does simplify to them. us, you know? Because, because a lot of the medical terms he said mm. were like flying over our heads, yeah, yeah. but we got what he was trying to talk about, yeah, you know, because yeah. he explains it well. And he kind of gives you, gives you a sense of hope, doesn't he? And like, a sense of trust, he's yeah, someone yeah. you can trust, because he's not saying things because it's it's something he made up no yeah, yeah, yeah. evidence based research and he's love always it. been Honestly, backed by it science gives you a lot of hope yeah, or anything yeah so if you have a problem look you, him up you probably the right a lot of people know him yeah he's the best person for the job absolutely absolutely yeah. well that's our episode thank you for tuning yep, in tune in next time for another guest and more stories right here on the untold good night good night <laughs>